When building a user interface for mobile devices, you follow all the same design principles as you would for any other desktop app. The one thing that's very important to know is the advanced layout techniques for things like responsive design. This ensures that when your app is running on a different device or in a different orientation, it's going to display in an adaptive fashion. There are some other properties which are worth knowing about, for instance, some application properties. Uh, the native app splash image, so if you're building a native app, that controls which image will display while the app loads. Uh, page transitions are also very important. In many cases you won't use them, but if you do want to slide from one page to the next or other effects, this is how you set it. You should try these out on different devices. Older, slower devices don't do very well with those. You can also manage page transitions though using uh, API methods. And if we come to the user guide, you can see, for instance, we've got a whole range of page navigation functions. Page jump has, um, most of them have, in fact, these extra two parameters, an optional transition parameter. Here you can specify one of the available page transitions. You specify that as a string. And the third parameter is also optional and allows you to specify whether it should reverse slide as opposed to slide in. The next thing that's worth mentioning is the way that Application Craft can manage fixed headers and footers. I've got on a page here a navbar. Now the navbar is a mobile widget, so be aware that we have, as well as the, uh, the common base widgets, we've also got a set of jQuery mobile widgets here. One of those is the navbar. And the navbar can be put any way you like. If you want it to be in a fixed footer or header position, then you'll need to put it inside a container. And if I right-click on here, I can see that its parent is called footer container. And to make sure that that appears as a fixed header or footer, in the style section, you'll see the fixed property. And by default, it's set to static, which means it stays wherever you put it. In this case, I've set it to bottom, so it will always appear at the bottom of the page. So if I uh, try this out, I've actually got this running in the Ripple emulator, which is covered in more detail in, uh, in another section. Here we can see, if I go now to the device information page, there you can see our footer. And um, no matter what happens, the footer will appear at the bottom of the page, regardless of how I scroll. At the time of recording this video, it actually follows the jQuery method, which it, as I scroll, it disappears and then reappears. Uh, in a version very soon, in November 2011, we will actually have smooth scrolling so that those will stay fixed and you'll get a smooth scroll without them disappearing.